Luckily, my doctor is a tough, sensible woman who doesn't give a damn. I love him, especially because he has a weird sense of humor. On March 16th, went to him for dry eyes and when I got to the examination area 5M from his desk, was out of breath. He said this was very unusual, so he checked my oxygen. Seeing it was in the early 80s, she was a bit worried as it must have been the early 90s. I had been short of breath for about a week and didn't think anything of it. Dr. Renata Shiablak has been my general practitioner for over 10 years. He immediately had me do a small series of tests COVID-19, sugar levels, lung function, regular 30-minute blood pressure checks, an electrocardiogram, and a coagulation test I've never heard of and can name. You don't remember. After final test, the nurse took me to a private room and closed door behind her. A few moments later, Shiobalek rushed in with a very worried expression on his face. Doctor, you need to go to a hospital immediately. Me, ha ha. Doctor, I'm serious. Your blood clot test came in with terrible numbers. Me, what now? Doctor, the blood clot test we did shows that something is wrong, and I think it might be a pulmonary embolism, which might explain the shortness of breath, but... Me, what is this? Why is it so serious? Can't you figure it out from here it's Thursday. I have a line, the paper is going to be published tomorrow. Doctor, no. I can't figure it out here. You should go to a hospital. You could have clots in your lungs arteries and you could have a heart attack die. People die from pulmonary embolism all the time. Dr. Sukosha, I'm not kidding. If you don't go to a hospital right away, I'll seriously consider breaking the rules and calling someone in your family and telling them what's going on. I'm going to the hospital right away. I will prepare the forms and talk to the relevant doctor. When was taken to Mo Park Hospital's second intensive care unit, I realized the seriousness of my situation and was a little scared, but also thought it would be a really weird way. A few days later, a friend reminded me that my favorite tennis player, Serena Williams, had two pulmonary embolisms that nearly killed her. My tennis friends jokingly call me Serena whenever I hit a hard, straight forehand, and they think it's weird that I'm sharing something so brutal with one of the greatest tennis players of all time. In intensive care when ICU nurses hooked up various beeping monitors, the pulmonologist came asked me a few questions and briefed on the tests I needed to do determine if I had clots in my lungs what could be causing them. A computed tomography scan showed several clots in my lungs, so other tests were ordered while doctor prescribed two injections of anticoagulants twice daily, but none of the tests revealed what might have caused clot. I do not have a family history of clots or genetic conditions that increase the risk of blood clots, and I have not traveled recently. Two days later a surgeon looked at my file for a while and stewed the test results, then chuckled to himself and said to me, pulmonary embolism, how did you do that? I also chuckled before I asked him meaningfully if shouldn't you have answered that question. She admitted that the test had not identified a cause. So not showing a clot in my left calf made him believe that part of the clot broken off and traveled to my lungs, but they had no idea what caused the clot. As former general reporter who has produced numerous crime stories, I have spent great deal of time on the casualty ward and seen horrific injuries, but being patient in ICU is quite different experience. During my time there, two patients about 10 meters away from me and one fell and had to be resuscitated about five times. I passed her bed once as she was resuscitated, and it almost made me sick to see large blood-soaked rags all over the small space she occupied. It's worth noting that when a patient collapses, it's not like you see them in Grey's Anatomy. On one occasion, patient in question had an accident around 3.30 a.m., and there was movement in dark as nurses rushed stop bleeding as they tried to wake specialists needed resuscitate him. No shouting or drama, just a quiet determination to save the life that slipped through the fingers of everyone involved. He began to prepare warm water for the awakened patients. 
Private nurses The person in charge of ICU is the most senior nurse, her title is chief leader, which I thought was a bit funny at first, but I soon grew to have a great deal of respect for various chief leaders and all nurses. The daytime chief leader was an elegantly dressed woman with long eyelashes. For a moment he consoled his family members and advised them about funeral services, then he began to shout oh why is this machine beeping? This is not an ice cream truck, stop it, as a nurse sped away to silence the disturbing machine. In intensive care you are connected to oxygen, a drop, a blood pressure cuff that automatically measures blood pressure every hour, an oximeter, and five bullets in your chest that measure breathing and pulse. If any of these machines are disconnected, it will beep and, whatever hour, a nurse will arrive to do the necessary checks to silence noisy machine. I was woken up several times each night by a nurse straightening one of the cables she had untied, most of the time trying to sleep, mostly to no avail. I was never angry just knowing they were doing their job but this was a little frustrating. Of course, it wasn't as frustrating as when the men from the morgue arrived to transport a body. The nurses tried to be discreet and drew all curtains around everyone's bed as the body was removed from ward. They said it was time for prayer, but I knew what it was. I wondered how many times they had to pretend to pray at height of the pandemic when cold storage was needed for all people who from COVID-19. I now have great respect for nurses, especially Vyalwa, Monica, Zandile, Dipuo, Grace, Zodwa, Angel, Landai, Peter and others whose names I can't remember. They literally have the crappiest job, yet they take care of total strangers with that effortless effort we take for granted but really shouldn't. However, I have the opposite feeling about my medical aid, Discovery. Pay full amount for the CT scan or test my doctor ordered in their room. The greedy army of Discovery actuaries has had my medical savings wiped out during my hospital stay, and I also have copays to take care of. Medical aids like Discovery should not be allowed to operate like traditional businesses. When you're a health insurer, there should be laws against having billions in reserves while constantly charging your customers higher for ever-decreasing benefits. I pay 4,362 rupees a month for my medical assistance, and even this amount does not save me from expensive additional payments. Worse still, Discovery clearly spends a lot of money on actuaries tasked with extorting more money from their customers each year, while spending very little on their customer service teams. Discovery eventually agreed to add him as a dependent, but even though my mom had been on medical care for over 20 years, I would have had to pay a ridiculously exorbitant fine of 50% of the premium each month. So, while this story is a big, heartfelt thank you all the medical professionals who saved my life, it's also a frustrated indictment of discovery, presumed to be the best medical aid in South Africa, but it chooses be obscene. Richer than paying for the drugs and services their customers deserve, this company is quickly becoming an incredibly bitter pill to swallow. About pulmonary embolisms A pulmonary embolism is a clot that develops in a blood vessel and then travels to the pulmonary arteries, where it blocks flow. Blood clotting is a normal process that prevents bleeding. The body always makes blood clots and breaks them down. A clot in a vein may be due to slowed blood flow, an abnormality in clot formation, or an injury to the vessel wall. Risk factors for pulmonary embolism include genetic conditions, family history of blood clotting disorders, conditions with limited mobility, surgery or injury, old age, history of prior clotting, obesity, smoking, certain birth control pills, and medical conditions. Medicines Symptoms to look out for include sudden shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, dizziness, chest pain that increases with breathing, palpitations, leg swelling, low blood pressure, and coughing up blood.